So this is basically the pictorial de depiction of the cluster vault. Uh, I hope this should be visible. Let me make it full screen if possible. Okay, there is no possibility. Okay, now in the in the in the standalone vault, we have seen a single vault is basically the point of contact for all the components like the CPM, PWA, CPM, uh, PSM, PSMP. Everyone would have the IP of the the uh, you know the cluster. Uh, sorry, the, the the standalone vault. It would be the static IP of the the standalone vault. Okay, so all of them would be communicating communicating to your uh, uh, to, to your to your standalone production vault. In case if you want, uh, if the if the you know if there is a sudden failure happens in the production vault, let's say if my production vault goes down, then we have seen there is a possibility of having a automatic failover as well to the DR. Okay, that means like in case we are down with the production vault, we do have a possibility of doing a failover to the DR, and there is no manual intervention needed. Okay. But let's say in case if I want to a periodic maintenance activity, okay, there is some Windows patches I need to uh, push on my uh, uh, standalone vault. How would I do? Because after pushing the patches, it would re re uh, need a you know reboot, and for rebooting the production vault, I need to do a failover. So it's not something that it will always be you know I would be going hard with a failover whenever I'm doing some sort of maintenance activity or periodic activity on my production vault. So the clustered vault is a preferred option wherein you would have two nodes here. So this is the primary node. I would say this is the uh, uh, you know this is the secondary node. So either of them can become primary. Okay. You can see these are basically connected with a, a public network and pi a private network. Let me just open something. It will make me more easier. I'm just making it as simple as possible. So that will be uh, much easier for both of uh, all of us. Make it a bit here itself. So guys, there are two nodes in the cluster, the node one and the node two, either of them would be active at a time. Okay. 
Now there are two types of uh, connectivity between this node one and node two. You can see there is a public network and there is a pri uh, uh, public network and there is a private network. Okay, if I go back to this uh, diagram again, you can see there is a public network, there is a private uh, network. Okay, and on top of it there is a VIP. Okay. So what happens exactly? Exactly, whichever the uh, which whichever the uh, uh, node is active. Let's say this node one is active. So VIP will point to the active node, node one. Here, let's say if the uh, VIP, if my VIP is one ninety two one sixty eight dot two one six dot one. Okay, this is the my VIP. This is my secondary node IP. It is all messed up here. Let me just put up something in the MS page. I'll just label or everything so it will make much easier. Okay, now if you can see here, these are the two nodes. Just, uh, just uh, forgive my uh, uh, writing skills here. So this is node one, this is node two. Okay, and they are connected to a network, which is basically the private network. This is this line is basically the private network through which basically this node one is checking whether the node two is active or node two is checking what is the status of node one. This is kind of uh, cross replication which is going on. They just actually checking the status of the nearby node or the neighbor node. They are jointly connected to a VIP. So VIP is nothing but VIP is just basically will get back to the active node. Let's say node one is active at the moment. So VIP will point to this active node. If node two becomes active, it will point to the node two. Okay. So, so this particular VIP is nothing but the public uh, public IP, which would be added in vault.ini file of all the components. 
Okay. So whichever the nodes is uh, active, it will point to that particular node. Let's say if node one is active, that means all the components are talking to node one. If node two becomes active, that means all the components are talking to node two via this whip. You will you will add this whip in all the vault.ini file of the components. Now what is these two? This is basically the storage. There are two types of storage in the uh, in the cluster. The first is the quorum storage. The second is the shared storage. So you might re recall that once we were doing the installation of Vault in the standalone Vault, there was a there was a, a, a prompt in between that where do you want to store all the safes? Okay, what would be the safe location? What would be the recording location? So we used to provide some path over there, and I told you there should be dedicated drive for storing your safes and everything. Here we will look after that particular thing in the shared storage. Okay, so every safe, uh, every every bit of safe would be uh, would be sitting in the shared storage of yours. So whichever the node becomes active, let's say N one becomes active, so the shared storage will link to the N one node. If N two becomes uh, active, that means the shared storage will link to the N T node. And this quorum is anyways needed for the cluster configuration. This quorum disk is a, whenever you build a cluster, you would always require a quorum disk. This is this basically holds the cluster configuration. So there are two types of there are two types of uh, 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 storage you require the quorum and the shared. Two types of server you require that is uh, for the vault one and vault two, and five whips you require. I will tell you why do we require all these things. Let me just clear top. Okay, now what it is, the private IP is basically needed for the node to node communication. So if I were to communicate between N1 and N2, each of them should have the private IP. Let's say this is something uh, IP ending with the 192.168.2161, then it has to be 192.168.216.2. It, it has to be in the same subnet so they can communicate to each other. There shouldn't be any kind of firewall, any kind of obstruction in between. Uh, which basically uh, uh, you know disrupts the communication so this is the private communication that happens from between node to node then there is a public ip as well public ip is what which through which the whip will talk to the uh, to the node let's say this active uh, this n1 becomes active so there would be public ip associated with this n1 as well whenever it becomes active the whip will talk to the public ip and the component would also talk to this node through the public ip they will Talk to the whip, and whip will give give them uh, you know uh, connectivity to this active node. So whip is nothing but it's basically the node which which gets associated itself with the active node. As you can see, this will this would be more uh, uh, descriptive. So I thought of parking it in the earlier session. So you can see that as of now the right node is active. So IP plus whip is one. Okay, the whip is pointing to the active node. Okay. The public network is nothing but the whip, and this both of these nodes are having two IPs: the public IP and the private IP. So, so coming back to this, there are five IPs in total: two public, two, pri uh, two private, and one whip. Okay, whip is getting connected to the active node, and same goes for the shared drive as well. Shared drive will basically link uh, uh, itself to the uh, to the uh, to the active node. Here you can see that shared drive is linked to the Active node. So shared drive is nothing but it hosts all the data, whatever the accounts, the saves that you have created, that would be sitting in the shared drive along with the database metadata. It would also be sitting in the shared drive. Now, how to create a cluster? Okay, what are the, uh, how to create a cyber cluster? So if you observe here, first and foremost is required five IPs. Five IPs is something wherein which, which require uh, two of uh, uh, 
private IP and two public IPs and one is web. So five IPs you would require. Second is what you would require is the storage. Two types of storage you would require. The first is the quorum. The second is the shared. Okay. So these two, you need not to look after. You just need to ask your uh, network team and the storage team that I am building a cluster. I would require the IPs and I would require the storage. So that's a, that is not something at your end. That is something at your network and storage team. But if you were to simulate the cluster in your lab, you need to build everything on your own. From the scratch, you need to uh, uh, create the IPs, uh, creating the web, and also the storage you need to create as well. So in Windows, let me show you what is the preferred storage first and foremost. This is the shared storage set of this commonly fiber channel send is accessible to both the cyber or digital cluster vault node, the host that holds the cluster, uh, cluster vault metadata database and data external files. Both cluster vault nodes are con connected to the shared storage, but only the active node can read and write to the disk. So whenever the active node is active, it can only access the, uh, the, the shared drive and it can also only update it. Shared address web, a single IP address that represents a digital a cyber or digital vault in public network of the organizer that, not, that does not correspond to the address of a single node. The web is allocated to the active node during the startup. During the failover process, the CVM service switches the web to the other node. So whichever becomes active, it, it gets uh, linked to that node. A small disk that is used to identify the connectivity and availability of the active node. The quorum mechanism is used to prevent communication errors from split brain scenarios. Quorum is based on the voting algorithm. Each node in the cluster node has a vote. The cluster keeps working as long as more than half of the voters are online. So they will keep on checking the status of the peer node. Let's say if there are two nodes, they will keep on checking like what is the status of my uh, neighboring node, whether it is up or not. If it doesn't get any response, let's say it assume that, you know, the peer node is down. In that case, the inactive node become active. This is the same like we have uh, the DR mechanism, same we have in the CVM as well. Cluster private network, the isolated network that contains a cyber digital cluster vault node and is used for cluster heartbeat communication. So this is just like, let's say this is a, this is a private network. So it will just need it from node to node communication. N1 will check the uh, status of N2 and N2 will check the communication uh, status of N1. So that is from node to node communication. You require this thing. Monitor vault services are same like we have in the standalone vault. Private act, server service, database service, logic container service, event notification service. Plus there is one service which is called the CVM. Now CVM is basically the utility for an, uh, for uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, for uh, managing the cluster. So this is something we are building. The uh, What we are building is the Cybera cluster. So let me just go on the lab. You feel free to stop me in between if something is going over your head. Feel free to stop me right away. Don't uh, don't worry about it. We can take it up from the beginning as well. So don't hesitate. This is something important and it is very rare that you would uh, find any kind of, uh, you know, uh, chance to implement it because it's a costly solution. Reason being there are a lot of hardware is needed on uh, for it. And uh, it is primarily preferred by the banking clients. They want to have a HS solution in their place. So they will go with this cluster solutioning. So I have set up three servers. One is the vault server, vault node one, vault node two, and the storage server. Let's start all of them.
so in this uh, in this solution we are going with the iSCSI storage iSCSI storage is available in the windows server i will tell you how you can install the storage rules before that let's uh, let's uh, let's confirm the ips of our uh, node 1 and node 2 this is my node 1 so i would require two ips for each node one is private and one is public and ideally it is always good to have the ips in the same subnet so we'll put it in the same subnet as well ip config so we have one ip 192 168 140 170 let let's hard code this ip first and foremost So this is this is my first IP. So this would be my private IP, guys. Okay, I will treat it as a private IP. We need to add one more network adapter to add a public IP as well. So this becomes my private IP. Let's add one network adapter so that one IP, which is our public IP, we can add, add accordingly. As I said, it is always good to have the IPs in the same subnet. So we will, we will put every IP, uh, you know, in the same uh, order. So it's 179, which is our private IP. This 182 is our public IP. So instead of 182, I'll make it 180. So they, uh, they appear in the same order. And one more thing, guys, the public IP will not have the default gateway. So now we have two IPs. We have 179, we have 182. I mean, let me make it 180 instead. It's 180 only. Let me reboot this node. I think we need to get the IP static. Let me just reboot this. Before that, let me install the VMware tool as well. So we can move the vault.ina file inside. So this is needed for the file sharing. Uh, I'm just installing it in between as well. So 
So we'll go ahead with the IP configuration first and foremost. Then we will go on the storage creation. So let it be going on. This is our node two. Here we will go with the 181, 182. So it's already 181, one IP more we need to add, that would be 182. So this is appearing as 183. Let me make it 182. And again, for the public IP, we will we'll not give any kind of default gateway. So 181 is coming, let me check again. This is 182 and this is Okay, here we need to allocate as well. Let me add this as 181. One forty two. Now we have 181 and uh, this, 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 this we just need to restart reboot as well to take the IPs into effect. Let's install this VMware tool as well in between. Let's reboot the server. Let's reboot this as well.
181. Why the other IP is not coming up? One eighty two, one eighty one is there. That's right. So that's fine, guys. Anyways, we have the static IP nippled over here. This is our public IP, which is uh, 182. And this is our private IP, which is 181. So we have two IPs for this node 2. Same goes for node 1 as well. 181, wait, 182. Let me check the other here as well. One seventy nine, and the other has to be one eighty. Let us check that as well. This is one eighty. So we're good from the IP configuration perspective. We are good. Now one IP we need to set up is the VIP IP. So we have set up the private IP and the public IP. The other IP is the VIP, so VIP can be taken as any IP in the same subnet. So we will uh, take it in the later phase. Let me go to the storage server now. So we need to set up two storage. The first is the shared storage. The second is the quorum storage. So let me just log in here. So this is our storage server guys. So for adding the storage, there is a role in the Windows server. I just tell you here. So if you want to allocate any storage from this server to these two servers, node one and then node two, if you want to consume the storage from this storage server for these two server, you can add a role. This is the role, iSCSI role is there. Go to file and storage, and this is the storage service role, guys. In that, you need to install this iSCSI target server. You need to install. So, I already install, installed it yesterday. That is all you need to install it. ISCSI target server that will allow the storage. So this this is this becomes the storage server now. You can uh, allocate the storage as per your requirement. So if I click on this file in the storage services, you can see this 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 is coming up. So the storage you would be using the ISCSI storage. So if I click on this ISCSI now, there are no ISCSI virtual disk. That mean that means there is no uh, storage uh, disk that we have created. We need to create two disks here. The first is the storage disk and the second is the quorum disk. Now we will create one by one. Now this is something that from which drive you want to obtain the uh, storage. So here only we have in the storage server, we have only single drive, which is called the C drive. So that is only the option. And in the C drive, we have 46 of 46 46.6 GB of free space. So we will obtain the storage, the shared storage from this, uh, this, uh, this uh, C drive only. Shared storage. So this would become our shared drive. And I will make it 10 GB. 
the shared rich storage would become the tangible one thing guys you need to make sure that it should always be fixed length it should not be dynamically expanding or differentiating or differentiating it should be marked as fixed fixed size now new ice ka the target how would the storage will uh, get to know that which particular uh, target it has to link to so we need to link it to this two boxes vault node 1 Vault node two, okay. So we'll embed the IPs from both of these nodes. I'll click next here. Add. Here you need to add the IPs of both these two servers. IP address. First IP from this node one. I think it's not getting copied. Let me type it manually only. One ninety two, one sixty eight, one forty one seventy. So this is the IP from the first node, one ninety two, one sixty eight, one forty, one one seventy nine. That is the first IP. From the second node also, we need to add the IP. One ninety two, one sixty eight, one forty dot. One eighty one. So here you need to keep it as blank. Create. So this is your shared storage being created here. I will share you a YouTube link which will basically uh, uh, depict that how to create a shared storage. I do have a documentation as well, so I will share you both of these things. I will upload it in the share drive so you can easily access. So guys, our shared storage is created now. You can see this is our shared storage. This is getting initialized now. Let it allow some time so it gets uh, initialized hundred percent and it is ready to use. So it's long process, but once you do it two three times, you would be able to understand it. I'm also installing after a long time. In the meantime, let's install. Uh, let's uh, create the uh, quorum disk as well. So shared storage we have already created. Let's go for the quorum as well. Q U O R U M quorum disk. I'll make two GB for the quorum disk, and again it has to be fixed size. So we will. Now you can see the this store the the quorum disk is marked to these two IPs which we have given for the shared storage. So it's already picking up the same IPs which we have given for the shared uh, storage. So let it be. We'll click on next only. So you can see this is uh, this is something quorum quorum disk two GB and it is intended to be used by these two node one and node two, node two. Okay, so that is good. Let's create that that as well.
So now if you see for the shared drive, it's not connected. Reason being, we need to configure it in both the nodes. So this quorum is also getting initialized. Let it get initialized now. Let it be completed first. As of now, it's 36%, 40% now. Let it go 100%, so it gets completed. So now this is completed. So we have created shared drive. We have created quorum drive. Now we need to get it visible on the uh, uh, on the on the uh, node one and node two. So I'll go ahead on this node one first. And if you see here, there is only C drive which is visible, which is a local drive to this node. We need to make sure that our Quorum drive and shared drive is also visible over here. So how we will do that? We will go to tools in the server manager, iSCSI initiator. Mark it as yes. iSCSI initiator is something which we want to use a shared storage. You need to initiate this iSCSI. Now it is asking for the target. What is this target? This is the target of our shared uh, storage server. So we need to make sure that our shared sto storage server has a static IP value. Let me see that if it has a static IP value. If not, then we will make it static. So 180 is the IP address. Let me make it something else. I think 180 has already been consumed for us. Let me make it 185. Okay, I'm trying to keep the IPs in the same subnet so we do not encounter any kind of connectivity issues in the later phase of time. So now this is our IP 185. Let's put that IP 192, 168, 140, 185. So we have basically assigned the IP address. Uh, sorry, let me go to node one only. Okay, if I click on connect, this is the storage server IP. If I click on quick connect here, you can see this is connected. This is done. We are connected to the storage server. And you need to go on this uh, volumes and devices. Click on auto configure. You would see both the shared storage as well as the uh, quorum storage uh, appearing over here. I click on connect again. This is already initiated. So in a scenario wherein we are not able to connect, in that case, we need to do that. So this is connected. Let me click OK. If I get back to the my computer, my PC, still the, the drives are not appearing. So what we will do, we need to make sure that the drives are online. We will go to our disk management. We will go to here. Uh, disk. I think I'm not putting the right command. So now if you can see here, we can see the shared drive here. 10 GB is coming up, but it is offline. The same goes for 
quorum it is coming up as offline so we need to bring it as online first online online initialize Uh, let me check this thing once. Okay, I think we are good. So let's move on to this uh, again. I will go ahead and initialize the disk. And the same I will do for, uh, for this as well. Now you can see that both becomes uh, on online now. What I'll do, I'll just go for this span disk. I will just uh, let me do it with this first of all. So this is looking fine guys. We have basically configured the disk. We have configured the IP address. And now if you see here in this PC, should be visible by now. It has to be MBR. I can convert to MBR disk here. There is an option I'm unable to recall it. Uh, we'll just, uh, we will basically do the naming convention for this disk. Like we will mark S for the shared drive and Q for the uh, quorum drive. Yeah, here we are. So I will mark S for the shared drive. Okay. And this I will mark as shared. The file system would be NTFS. Finish. So this is healthy partition. This becomes shared drive. The same we will do for the quorum as well. We'll mark it as the Q for the quorum. Q for the quorum. Q U O R U M. So one important thing is like the drive letter should be same for node one and node two. We will do the same process in the node two as well. So now you see that quorum is available, the shared is available. I'll make them offline now. Before that, let us check if it is appearing is there or not. So now you can see that quorum is appearing, shared is appearing. So I'll make them offline and we will do the same thing for the node two as well. So I'll go to my node two now. I'll go to tools, iSCSI initiator, mark it as yes. dot one eighty five. This is our shared storage server. Click, it's connected. That is this. Go to volumes and disk here, auto configure. Okay, now we are done with it. Click okay. 